Welcome to Epworth United Methodist Church, where we follow the example of Christ by welcoming, nurturing, and serving all people with love. Greetings on this third Sunday of Advent. In case you do not know, the church is closed except for some of our outreach ministries, and we are grateful to the volunteers that make it possible for us to continue to care for our vulnerable neighbors by providing food for them, dropping it off on their porches during this holiday season. We will be continuing to worship virtually via the website for the indefinite future, which includes on Christmas Eve, we will only be worshiping virtually on the website, and the service will be at seven o'clock, and then you can watch it any time after that as well. Uh, that will include communion, so I invite you to bring with you um, the elements, uh, some form of bread or cracker, as well as juice or um, some kind of fluid that will be symbolic to you of the Lord's Supper. Thank you for your faithful stewardship throughout uh, this time uh, through your regular giving. You can, of course, give electronically through your bank on our website or mail it to the church. Sermons during Advent are based on Adam Hamilton's book, The Incarnation, and you are welcome to join us for our Bible study on the book via Zoom on Wednesdays at seven o'clock. You can just contact the church office to get connected to that. You don't have to have read the book to be part of that study. This week, I will be preaching on the third chapter of that book. On this third Sunday of Advent, we remember that Advent is a time of celebration. It is a time of rejoicing in all that God has done, is doing, and will do through Jesus, who is God made flesh. It is celebrating that God loves us so much that God became a humble, vulnerable baby born to be our savior. Advent is a season of joy. We as children of God are made for joy. Keeping that in our mind and heart changes our perspective. We remember that while pain and grief are real, we are walking alongside of God, who becomes real to us in Jesus, and who is far greater than anything we may face in this life. Joy is not a denial of reality, but our protest to the world's despair. We have faith in the one who saves and redeems and makes all things new. Trusting in his power and promises brings us everlasting joy. Today, on this third Sunday of Advent, as we light the candles of hope, peace, and joy, we thank God for giving us so many gifts, especially the gift of Jesus, so that we may be full of joy. As we prepare for a time of prayer, I want, to, I want to thank you for all of your prayers for my friend Sandy. Uh, her surgery was successful this week for her uh, cancer of the uterus, 
and we are now waiting for the pathology report that we should get back sometime this week. Uh, Elva Simpson has asked for our prayers for her sister Gaynell who is struggling with health issues at this time. Uh, we also lift up Eleanor Moore, uh, who is continuing to undergo chemotherapy for lymphoma. We um, continue to pray for the ongoing number of people uh, contracting COVID-19, including uh, those in our congregation. Um, more and more people every day, every day in our city and state, in our country, around the world, um, are contracting the virus and um, that is putting a strain on our healthcare workers. And so we pray for, um, for all of those impacted. We pray that, that all of us would make wise choices, um, which is currently not happening in all circumstances. And at the same time, we praise God for the vaccine and pray that all goes smoothly with the transition and um, as that is dispersed around the country as well. And Marlene Hott uh, just shared with me that her grandson is graduating from OSU this month, and so we celebrate that accomplishment. Let us pray together. I remember the blue, cold child who came to a winter world, O oh God, wherein those who were warm and well-fed knew not of his coming. I know that for many people our world is a winter world. There are the starving and the wandering, the victims of famine and of war. There are in our nation those who face the debilitating fear of unemployment and the terrible frustration of not being needed or wanted. And the blue cold child will come again on Christmas Day. In my remembering him, let me not forget them, the helpless and the hungry those who either have no songs to sing or no strength for singing. For in my remembering him, O oh Lord, I become aware that he was a hand reaching out to the whole world. He was a gift to all humankind. He was the warm fire of your love in a winter world. He was your arm reached out to embrace the lost and the lonely, the unlovable and the lovable. And in remembering him, I recall my own identity as one who has taken his hand, warmed my heart at the fire of your love, entered the embrace of your concern and I am grateful. And then in your presence, O oh God, I ask myself if my gratitude spills over into others' lives. I must confess I am not sure it does, at least not very often. So I pray this Advent that my membering may become renewal my recollection, enlargement. Go with me as I move through these December days toward the Christmas morning where again the blue cold child will cry under the winter sky. I remember Jesus, O oh God, and in the memory is the mystery of love, your love and our love all love is divine and human. And the mystery is the memory of life, 
in Jesus Christ, our Lord, who hears this prayer and all the prayers of our hearts, and who teaches us when we pray to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Make wide the way and straight the path, God with us. He comes in mercy, not in wrath, God with us. Behold an ancient mystery, God stepping into history. Hail the incarnate deity, God with us. Goodwill to men and peace on earth, God with us. He comes to us by humble birth, God with us. Dressed alike in flesh and bone, He comes to make His Father known. His Spirit says we're not alone, God with us, God with us. Because we fell, Yeshua HaMashiach, Emmanuel, God with us was always meant to be God with us with you with me innocent as a newborn child God with us the souls of sinners reconciled God with us from Bethlehem to Calvary, He comes to set the captives free, that every grave might empty be. God with us, God with us, what a story to tell. Jesus Christ, our Emmanuel, the lame will dance and the blind will see. God with us, with you, with me. Not by merit do we proclaim. He is fully God and fully man. Blessed be his name. For the eternal one has surely kept his vow to be God with us. God and trim the tree God with us a holiday with a mongrel pedigree God with us but at the heart of why we're here the morning after midnight clear reverence replaces fear God with us God with us our hearts compel our worship of the living God Emmanuel May His Spirit give open eyes to see. God with us, with you, with me. God with us, with you, with me. Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, 
she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband, Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife, but knew her not until she had given birth to a son. And he called his name Jesus. Let us pray. O holy child of Bethlehem, descend to us, we pray. Cast out our sin and enter in. Be born in us this day. Open our hearts, open our minds, open our spirits. Pour out your spirit upon us that through my words or in spite of them, we would hear your word to us today. Amen. Many of us are already familiar with Matthew's version of the birth of Jesus. Joseph finding out about Mary's pregnancy, planning to dismiss her quietly, and then suddenly everything changes in a dream, and he becomes an expectant father as he takes Mary as his wife. Unlike Luke's version of the birth of Jesus, with details of a long journey to Bethlehem, a baby born and laid in a manger, shepherds and angels in the sky. In Matthew, it is simply reported, she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. We know from last week that the name Jesus means to save, that Jesus is our savior, our deliverer from sin, from fear and despair, from death itself. Another promise the angel gave to Joseph is that the child born to Mary would be Emmanuel, which means God with us. If there is anyone who needed to know that God was with him, it was Joseph. He had been blindsided by the news that Mary was expecting a child. Now he was being called to be his earthly father, helping to raise him. That's a lot of pressure. Jesus, Joseph didn't fully know what he was getting himself into. Of course, do any of us really ever know what we're fully getting ourselves into? The angel had been sent to call Joseph to take on this special role, to help raise the child who would save his people from their sins. An overwhelming thing, but the same child would also be God with us. God would be with Joseph every step of the way. He would never be alone. 
Jesus does not come to save us from uncertainty or from the pain of love or loss. He does not keep us from having to make hard decisions without knowing what the consequences will be or doing challenging things. But he does come to be God with us, Emmanuel. God knows our deep need to not be left alone. So God sent an angel to Joseph so that he would not have to endure such a risk alone. God did not abandon Joseph to an awkward and potentially shameful life decision. God gave him a sign. Jesus Christ is God's most trustworthy and reliable sign to us that God will never abandon us in the uncertainty and riskiness of life. And I find that personally very reassuring and comforting. A few years ago, Bette Midler sang the song from a distance. It's a very lovely song and was very popular at the time. But it is not about the God we put our faith in as Christians. The key words are, God is watching us from a distance. And the words point to the world being in harmony and at peace that there are no wars, no one is hungry, there is no disease. Well, we know that isn't reality, but from a distance, one could think it is like that. But God doesn't see us from a distance. God knows there is violence and fighting, that there is hunger and need, that there is disease and climate change. God knows the brokenness of the world, of humanity, and of our lives because God is with us in Jesus. God enters into the world. God enters into our human experience to feel, feel them personally just as we do. So God is walking with us through our pain and our sorrow, our grief and our fear, our doubts and all of our experiences and emotions. As Adam Hamilton says in his book, in Jesus, God experienced temptation and love hunger, joy, fear, friendship, grief, doubt, rejection, a sense of abandonment, abandonment by God, and death. He wept, he bled, he suffered, he died. There is something, th something profoundly moving about God actually knowing what we are experiencing as humans. So when you come to God, pouring out your heart, asking for help, or praying for his forgiveness, you pray to the one who knows, who understands, what it is to be fallible, frail, and fearful. That is the power of the incarnation, he says. And it is comforting to know that while God is vaster than anything we can fathom, that God is also as close as our breath, and God became small, as small as a humble and vulnerable child to show us 
the kind of love that God has for us, a vulnerable love, that we would be vulnerable toward each other, human, so that we would show our human vulnerability to each other. One theologian suggests that perhaps the promise at the heart of this passage in Matthew is that as God came before to be with, to use, to accept, and to fill Joseph and Mary with his presence at the birth of Christ, so also God comes to us in Jesus to be with us, to use us for God's purposes, to assure us that we are accepted as we are, and to fill us with his presence, that we might incarnate his love with those around us. And truly, that is what it means to be the body of Christ, to be his hands and feet and heart and voice as a physical reminder that Jesus is present wherever we are. For example, I read a story about a little girl whose friend had died. She went to her friend's house to comfort her mother in her grief. When she came home, her parents asked her what she had said to somehow bring comfort to her friend's mother. And the little girl said, nothing. I just crawled up in her lap and cried with her. That is incarnational love being the presence of God, offering God's compassion and love to someone who is hurting. Jonathan Kozal, in his book, Ordinary Resurrections, writes about children living in one of the poorest areas of South Bronx in New York City. He spent four years with kids that went to one of the elementary schools there and a local church nearby. He tells this story about two boys, both of them having their own challenges, but bound together by their common poverty. They spent so much time together that they were equally friends and challengers. One day, while Jonathan was with Otto and Elio in the sanctuary of the church, they were looking at a stained glass window. They were checking out all of them in this beautiful old sanctuary. Otto pointed to an image of an angel. I know someone up there, he said. Who? asked Elio. My brother, Otto answered. He simply gave that two-word answer and swallowed and looked down because his eyes were filling with, with tears. Elio knew, of course, about his brother. Without a hesitation in the world, he reached his hand across the space between them. Otto wept. Softly, Elio reached out and touched his hand. Otto had tormented Elio many times. Once Elio had been so mad at Otto's verbal sparring with him that he reached his fist right back over his head and punched him in the nose. But here was Otto losing all the armor of his cleverness and toughness. And here was Elio, unable to look on at someone else's sorrow without wanting to comfort it. 
Two boys stood together there another moment under the stained glass angel, not saying a word. Their two hands clenched together tight, said everything. That's incarnational love. Being the presence of God by being a loving and compassionate presence to each other. God is with us. We are never alone. Jesus is Emmanuel. He has come to show us the fullness of God's love. So let us incarnate Jesus' love in our lives as we trust in him, our King, our Savior, Emmanuel. Let us go forth praising Christ our King, serving Jesus our Savior, remembering that he is our hope, our peace, and our joy, trusting in Emmanuel, who is God with us, and incarnating his love wherever we are. <laughs>